thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Yanis Filipidis. I'm a marketing consultant at uh, TD Reply, uh, based in Berlin, in Germany. And I will be talking to you about the how to level up uh, your Power BI dashboard storytelling with the use of some external uh, data visualization tools. Uh, this QR code there is for the form for the feedback. I will have it also at the very end. Really appreciate it. It's a way of getting better for us. Um, feel free also to connect via Twitter, X, uh, or LinkedIn. Um, yeah, and actually, let's kick it off. Let's think what is considered um, a well-designed dashboard. What are the elements that consist and make a, a dashboard to be considered well-designed? Well, according to Stefan Few, there are four elements. Um, it has to be very well organized, or at least come through like that. Um, it has to meet the expectations of the stakeholder and the end user. Um, it has to provide uh, enough information, let's say. Um, don't get me wrong with the word condensed here. I don't mean to say that it has to be packed or something. It just has to provide efficient information, uh, database, and has to come through in a concise and clear way without leaving any room for questions or uh, misunderstandings and red flags raised. Um, but let's walk through together through the dashboard creation journey. Um, there are four main pillars. Uh, the context, the visual display, the user orientation, and the storytelling. Let's start with the context part. It's all about data. Uh, we have to keep in mind what kind of uh, data we have. What's the domain? It's purely marketing data, sales. Uh, it's a mix of them. Uh, what kind of data granularity do we have? It's quite important for uh, building the infrastructure, infrastructure later on. And what kind of update frequency uh, are we aiming for? Uh, definitely, we should also keep in mind the, the scope. What are the business questions that we need to answer via the, the report? And based on those, we should design also the metrics, the metrics that we're going to be using uh, in order to help or facilitate decision making. Um, good. Uh, practice here is to use um, KPI mappings. Um, a very nice template I found out and I'm using myself is uh, provided by uh, CastorDoc. It's a Figma-based, uh, actually, template. And it's very nice, very well organized and useful. Um, we should also ask ourselves, first of all, and the stakeholders as well, how the dashboard, dashboard is uh, supposed to be used. Uh, is it going to be part of um, Azure Fix on a weekly basis, monthly basis? What's going to be the audience if it's a case? Um, are they going to take decisions based on that? Just track performance, uh, and we should act accordingly. And of course, that's defining also the user objectives, right? Uh, at this point, I would like to, to give some tips. I will do it throughout the, uh, the deck here. Um, my tip is actually to move away from the, from the screen. Uh, there are lots of tools out there that uh, help us to be efficient, uh, be productive, use in groups, if it's the case. Uh, to be honest, none of us is super um, uh, expert on using them because it's, they're not our main tools. And we're focusing way too much on how to use them rather than focusing on what exactly to design. So uh, we're missing something there. But we all know how to use pen and paper, right? So. Just do it, um, use post-it, whiteboards, whatever. It's uh, better for you. Just uh, This is the creative part. You, should, you shouldn't lose creativity and at this stage, at this point of, uh, of the uh, creation journey. Um, a nice practice that we are doing, at least at the kind of job I'm working on, uh, it's creating personas. We should keep in mind what kind of uh, roles uh, the, the end users do have. Uh, do they have strategical role? Do they have an analytical perspective on the data and the, and the report? Operational one? Actually, we should make the report in order to help them be successful at their job towards the supervisor, most probably. Moving forward to the visual display part, uh, there are lots of uh, fonts out there, uh, also in Power BI. But to be honest, uh, out of those, the most appealing or perceived as appealing 
uh, are not all of them. Like, it's quite subject subjective, right? And uh, to play it safe here, let's rather stick on the very uh, standard ones. Uh, we should also predefine uh, the font size that we're going to use based on, on the use cases. Certain font size for the title, subtitle, the content, the metrics. We should stick on that, be consistent across the report. It will save us, uh, as developers, also a lot of time. Um, and we should also make sure to uh, use contrast in order to create hierarchy. And a uh, very specific example here is to avoid using gray text on top of colored uh, backgrounds, and uh, this would make more sense later on. So, uh, tables. It's unfortunate that we have uh, such a sophisticated data visualization tool, but still we're using tables. Um, according to my experience, maybe you have something different. Uh, two reasons are behind that. Uh, the, the client or the end user would like to have very high data granularity, or actually they want to filter accordingly, export and go to Excel and play around with the data. Uh, this is sad, but practically speaking, this is the case, most, most probably. Uh, whenever we have that and we have numbers, we should always right align them. Um, Talking about charts here, um, of course, out of the box, Power BI has a lot of charts. Um, those five ones, uh, bar charts, line charts, cards, maps, and waterfalls, waterfall charts, are more than uh, sufficient to create a nice uh, data storytelling. Um, of course, there are more that we can just import, but um, in case we find ourselves that we don't know what exactly, according to the case, we uh, should be using. Uh, SQL BI guys, they create a very nice kind of map for the visuals. Uh, it's from 2018. I'm not sure if there's something more uh, recent, but it's still uh, valid, I have to say. They group everything according to the case, uh, whether we have data and we want to show comparison, uh, change over time, ranking. I'm not sure if it's visible with a green background. Is those that are um, optimally uh, used or the, the case that we should uh, go for and with the red background, those that are not so optimal. Uh, lastly, in this part of the visual display, I would like to introduce to you the data ingress here uh, from, uh, from Tufta. The way you should think about it is like if you had to print out uh, a graph, the, the ink used for the very specific numbers for the elements uh, to show exactly the numbers and uh, what you should take out in terms of data from the visual, comparing to the overall ink used for the print is the actual ratio. And you can imagine that the higher the ratio, the better. Uh, some do's and don'ts. Um, don't use 3D visuals. For the same reason, you shouldn't use or you should avoid using pie charts, uh, radar and area charts. The second bullet point, I think, Maybe it's a bit controversial for some, uh, but basically they, uh, they distort proportions and they mislead the way of uh, the end user is reading the charts. Um, definitely we should also always use uh, zero as our chart baseline. Uh, furthermore, we should aim uh, whenever possible for one pager or single pagers, so avoid forcing the end user to scroll up and down or left to right and generally speaking, use uh, suitable proportions. Um, it will make, uh, we, we come to that in the next pillar, that's uh, the user orientation, and what we mean by that, um, there are certain ways that we can kind of manipulate the way uh, the end user is reading through the dashboard. Uh, one of those is the size, uh, the font size or the visual size of, of the graphs is kind of uh, a tool in our hands that uh, we can use and help the user and uh, attract the attention uh, the way we would like to. The bigger the size, the more prominent the elements. Um, but we should not also here not overdo it because we're just introducing noise. Uh, in terms of color, we should, uh, the, the good practice here is just use uh, palettes color palettes, and uh, we should have the, uh, our primary colors, secondary ones, the colors we're going to use in charts. Uh, we should make uh, sure that we have enough 
for, for the categories and the sentiment. Um, in the categories, we should make sure that we are also consistent and we pre-decide pre uh, yeah, pre what exactly uh, we're going to use. For example, if we have uh, countries and we decide that blue is going to be for Great Britain, to stay like that for all the tabs. Uh, there are some tools that can help us to generate uh, color palettes. Uh, and also, maybe, uh, I guess you know already, uh, Power BI is using hex colors or hex codes. In case we'd like to use something specific and we're not sure about it, we can go uh, to a website, for example, in case we find it to a pixel level and pick it up with uh, hex pickers. Uh, also, very good practice is to use, for, for several reasons, uh, good practice is to use uh, Power BI themes. Uh, lots of them are coming out of the box, but we, we can also uh, import customized ones with simple JSON files and code. Um, regarding position, at least in the Western world, we, most of the people are reading in a so-called Z-shaped structure. So from uh, top to bottom and left to right. And this is something we're going to use strategically in order to emphasize uh, things and put them in a very central place and direct the attention of the user. And generally speaking, we should start uh, at the top with a high level information and gradually go down uh, with a more granular one. Um, and by any means, we should avoid uh, using a diagonal structure. During the sessions of the last days, uh, I guess you've heard already of uh, Gestalt principles. Um, they have uh, psychology theory behind it, and uh, cognitive behavior is basically how our brains are rooted to perceive visual uh, cues. The number of them can vary, uh, but main, uh, mainly there are seven of them. So enclosure, similarity, continuity, closure, connection, proximity, and symmetry. Uh, we can use them in order to group elements and graphs and avoid just putting and add more elements into the uh, report and create, no create noise. Accessibility, I have to admit that lately came to my attention, uh, apparently 8% of men and 0.5% of women have some kind of uh, color blindness. Um, in case you're wondering how your report is perceived by people with such kind of problem, you should head to colorblindness.com. Uh, you can upload a picture there of your report and choose what kind of uh, color blindness you would like to simulate. Um, main way of uh, tackling this issue is using uh, contrast. Uh, but also you, um, Power BI has um, accessibility themes uh, out of the box and you can uh, practically and easily solve this issue. Of course, I've, we all would like to develop aesthetically appealing reports. And I really like this uh, close from uh, Nussbaumer. So every element we put on a page or screen puts a cognitive burden on our audience. And practically what that's, that means, we should avoid clutter. And I like also what usually is the other way of, uh, of thinking in those cases, the other side of the coin. We should remove white space and not just add white space. That's usually the case we're doing. Uh, good practice also here is to use margins and paddings. Uh, it will help us organize our elements and the graphs in the chart and uh, have a nice um, organize uh, and, and clean touch, as we mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, the, uh, of course, Power BI comes with, um, uh, with the grids in order to align your elements, but it's nice to, to have also this 12-column uh, grid. It will also help you to, uh, to put your elements and the graphs within the canvas. Generally speaking, mentioned already, we should uh, systematize everything, uh, the fonts, the dimensions, the colors we're going to be using, and uh, keep that be consistent. That's very important uh, throughout uh, the report. And lastly, a tip here is uh, to use icons as cues in order to uh, anchor the, the eye of the, of the user. Uh, there are lots of libraries of icons and fonts in uh, Google Fonts and uh, fontawesome.com. 
And at the very last uh, part here, I would like to, we are coming to the storytelling pillar. Um, we are raised with uh, fairy tales and stories and reading books. All those, they have something common that uh, our brains are already rooted. Uh, they have a beginning, a middle, and end in terms of storytelling. We should keep using this, uh, this, this idea and uh, principle in our reports as well, and there are certain uh, frameworks that we can help us to, to do so. Sort of, uh, it's the inverted pyramid, martini glass, hourglass, and diamond. Some nice concepts that can help us uh, arrange things. Uh, the inverted pyramid is uh, the concept that we start with the most uh, important information and we move forward uh, to the least important. Uh, the, this is the kind of inclined uh, martini glass. We are just trying to uh, direct or take by the hand the, the user and show them the data and what they can take out of it, but then we leave them explore the data themselves. And lastly, uh, the diamond one, that we start with the North Polar KPIs, maybe uh, something specific, we go more broad, uh, explore the data and come to the same point again. So that's that would be it for my side. Please uh, take the time to uh, leave some comments, some feedback. It's very useful. And I'm open to any questions. If there is something from online or from the audience. Where, where do you usually put your slices in a Power BI report? Sorry? Where, where about in the Power BI report do you usually put your slicers? Um, so this depends. I mean, uh, the tools, it depends on the client, right? First of all. Uh, and they also, this is something very nice that recently was introduced, that uh, there's a pen that is coming in and out, and this is something more more useful in uh, creating a kind of a wow effect for, for the end user. Um, mostly left on right. Myself, I'm putting them on, on the left. It literally depends on the, on the end user and something we are pre-aligning in sessions like beforehand. Um, in the last part, last part of your presentation, you had the, the yeah, the three ways of storytelling, mm -hmm. is that? Uh, where can we um, get more information about it? Is it uh, your ideas or is no, there some no, no, theory have, about um, it? Or? Uh, the picture itself and the way it's designed, I have the credits there, but uh, even that, it's, it's, it's an idea of uh, uh, storytelling. Uh, generally speaking, it's only those four ones, there are even more, uh, but those I find useful and applicable to Power BI and data storytelling. Uh, to be honest, this is a general concept that I didn't find from, uh, from literature, uh, from, the, from the books. Um, I can provide you also the, the, the source in terms of links yeah, uh, to later like on. Get some more th yes, uh, I mean, readable. also I can provide the sources and the books that I use for the presentation. Thanks. The pain you just mentioned who uh, uh, kind of pops in and out, is this a new feature of Power BI? This new feature? Uh, actually, a uh, fun fact behind that is that uh, I got approval the beginning of the uh, of the year before, uh, for my team to 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 build something similar, and within a month uh, Microsoft was coming with this in the release, and luckily enough we had a quite broad timeline, and that was coming at the very beginning, so not big drama, but uh, yeah, this is uh, already uh, available and you can uh, you can use it. Okay. Um, I don't remember, to be honest, but um, yeah, you, uh, it's, it's a slicer, uh, slight pain. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't remember, to be honest. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. And